Hey, all you sinners and saints, it's TJ here, the Motor Sage. I'm sitting around the house today. It's been snowing and blowing. And uh, I'm figuring I want to get out of here for a little bit. I'm going to go for a ride out in the countryside. Take a look at what's going on out north of the place where I live here. And uh, stop into the VFW, talk for some folks and uh, see how things are going. It's a rural area out where I'm going and a lot of farms, some lumber and business, and folks that commute on into town at the factories uh, for making a living. So come along with me and uh, see what the countryside looks like. decided to uh, go around about a little bit rather than going through the center of town. I don't like driving a lot of traffic. And this is a nice ride out here through the country. It's got a little bit of a, a village kind of to go through. But that's okay there. Ooh. A Black Angus and a Hertford. Uh, takes me back a few years. I used to work as a uh, teenager on a farm and we had only a couple of beef cattle and we had, I think it was around 57 to 60 uh, Guernsey milking cows. And uh, this time of year got itchy to let them out of the barn. They've been cooped up waiting on spring. Gotta hand it to all the farmers today. The economics is not leaning their direction. And uh, prices are so controlled by these uh, corporations and corporate farms. I know in my last congregation there was a 
few farmers that uh, they farmed part time. They'd get up five o'clock in the morning, feed milk or do whatever they had to do, and then about eight nine o'clock they went to work. As, as if they weren't working beforehand. Then they come home five o'clock at night and do some more work. Well, the trouble is, is government controls don't seem to help. In fact, the big, the big battle is between the corporations and the government to see who's going to control the farmer. But that's the way it is all over. I know when I worked as a mechanic and taught mechanics, the big thing was the, uh, the testing of mechanics to make sure they were up to proficiency. Well, that seems like a good thing. I uh, helped write test booklets for the uh, National Association for Automotive Service Excellence. Eventually, it was called the ASE, Automotive Service Excellence. Well, I wrote all the test booklets for uh, Chilton Publishing, Motor Age Magazine. I was the technical editor there for a time. And uh, I noticed that uh, the ASE testing was really a good thing until, until they started practice where if you weren't ASC controlled or certified, you could work. And there were shops that were pretty much like that. Well, some mechanics uh, can't test very well. In fact, I have a relative of mine that is dyslexic. And he uh, Oddly enough, can work as well with his left hand as his right hand, which is a real advantage to a mechanic. In any case, because he's dyslexic, he doesn't read very well, he uh, doesn't test at all well, so he never could become ASE certified. But, let me tell you, he's one of the best mechanics I ever knew. Because he learned, he went to school, went to a tech school, got a, an associate's degree in tech school without being able to read. Without being able to read. This tells you how smart the man was. But consequently, because he could not test and he could not read very well, he could read specifications and stuff like that, but for reading any of the length of text, it would give him a nightmare. Whenever you make a blanket requirement like that, there are always people who fall through the cracks. People who just can't fit into a cubicle that the government would step or someone would uh, uh, try to force them into. Some of the best mechanics I ever met were farmers who worked out of a farm shop, made a hot rod. Been in the automotive uh, service industry myself, and loving uh, antique cars and classic cars and muscle cars and you know, all kinds of cars. Uh, I got to know quite a few people around the trades as far as uh, making uh, cars and uh, doing restoration cars. And let me tell you, some of the best mechanics I ever knew were 
college graduates. But they do their stuff.
when I look around my town. Well, it's a nothing but a big old frown. It's not as simple as the people on the TV make it out to be. Well, I'ma go to the mountaintop and I'ma gonna see everything they got. Hear every sound, see every town I can. Well, I'ma go to the mountaintop and I'ma gonna see everything they got. Hear every sound, see every town I can. Well, I met a man along my way. Well, he taught me how to pray. And the teacher teaches me Well, there's no God but you and me And the father working hard To keep the family farm And the banker telling me how to make a quick buck or two Well, I'm a go to the mountain top And I'm a gonna see everything they got Hear every sound, see every town I can well, I'ma go to the mountain top and I'ma gonna see everything they got. Hear every sound, see every town I can. Well, I met a man down in the south with an elephant in his mouth. And the jackass to the north Then a boy up to a snore I saw a town up in the west With a whole lot of socialists And a bit of anarchy in the big city Well, I'ma go to the mountain top And I'ma gonna see everything they got Hear every sound, I see every town I can well, I'ma go to the mountain top and I'ma gonna see everything they got. Hear every sound, I see every town I can. Well, I said, hear every sound, I see every town I can. Coming into unfamiliar territory in the final panting road signs and all that sort of stuff. I can get terribly lost and my wife wouldn't see me till after dark and think I'm out carousing. So I'm gonna sign off now. May the Lord take a liking to you.